we'll continue our discussion of generic functions. This time talking about generic functions of multiple arguments. A function might want to operate on multiple data types. So take multiple different data types as arguments and still do the right thing. We saw examples of this last time with the stir and repr functions that are built into Python. So last lecture, we talked about how polymorphic functions exist, and they can be created using shared messages. So if you just make sure that the same attribute appears on all your different classes, that's one way to implement a polymorphic function, or a generic function. Interfaces for collections of messages, or attribute names in the case of the Python object system, that all have specific behavior conditions. And we saw that we were able to create two interchangeable implementations of complex numbers using a shared interface that said every complex number had real and imaginary parts as well as a magnitude and an angle. Okay, so that story has been told already. We're now going to build on top of it. In this lecture, we'll continue with our example of building a number system. But we're going to be able to combine related types that don't share an interface. We're going to learn about operator overloading so that we can actually use the plus symbol instead of a name like add. We're going to talk about a method for relating types together called type dispatching, which allows us to create generic functions of multiple arguments. And we'll also talk about a clever technique called type coercion. So what's different today is that today's generic functions will apply to multiple arguments that don't share a common interface. If you have arguments that do share a common interface, you don't need this stuff, type dispatching and type coercion. But if you don't, then these are useful techniques. OK, so we have to remember the building blocks that we're going to combine. Last time we had developed a rational number implementation, so implementation for fractions. And here's what it looked like. We have a way to construct a rational number from a numerator and a denominator. This version reduces numerand denom to lowest terms so that they are relatively prime. So if I pass in 2 and 4, numerand denom will actually be bound to 1 and 2 dividing out the greatest common divisor, which is 2 in that case. We have a wrapper method that tells us how to print this out so that when we run a Python interactive session, we can see what's going on. And I'm just going to right now add two more methods. One's called add, one's called mull. And they implement the same formulas that we had before for our rational data abstraction. So in this case, we add two fractions by multiplying the numerator of the first by the denominator of the second, adding that to the numerator of the second times the denominator of the first, and dividing by the product of the denominators. That's just what this code says, where self and other are x and y. And multiplication is even simpler than that. So here's the same code for rational. GCD was imported from the built-in fractions module that's part of the standard library. So I can create a rational 1 divided by 3, and it will just appear like this. I can give it a name. I can also give 6 the name, which is 1 divided by 6. And if I add 3rd and 6 together, I'll get 1 half, because that's what you get when you add a 3rd and a 6th. And if I multiply a 3rd by a 6th, then I'll get 1 over 18. OK, so that's our rational class. We also have classes for complex numbers. So the complex number classes we have start with a base class called complex, which defines addition and multiplication for complex numbers. I won't go through the details again, but I will point out that in order to make this arithmetic so simple, we needed two different classes, one that represents complex numbers by their real and imaginary components, and another that represents them by their magnitude and angle in a polar coordinate system. Then we had the two implementations of complex numbers. 
each of which are subclasses of this base class, so they share the same add and mull. But this one stores as instance attributes the real and imaginary components and computes the magnitude and angle on the fly using a little bit of math. And this one stores the magnitude and angle directly and computes the real and imaginary components using a little bit of trigonometry. So we created this complex number system and we can use it to say things like uh, I is a complex number that is made out of zero real and one imaginary. And if I multiply I by I, I'll get a complex number that is magnitude one in the negative real direction. That's what pi is. It goes in the real axis, but in the negative direction. And so that's our representation of negative one. And you can also add together i and i to get 2i. So those are our pieces. What we cannot currently do is add together a rational and a complex number. We can add rationals to rationals. We can do complex and complex. But we still have some more work to do, because you are supposed to be able to combine different numbers together, even if they're under different representations. So. Currently, we can add rationals. So this is how we would express 3 14 plus 2 7 We can multiply complex numbers. So this is a representation of the square root of negative 1. This is also a representation of the square root of negative 1. We can combine these two complex number representations arbitrarily together because they share the same interface. So this just says i times i is negative 1. But we still have some work to do, because what we'd like to be able to do is just use the plus symbol instead of add. So here are the same examples, but using plus and times instead of add and mull. Those are called operators. And in order to do that, we'll need a technique called operator overloading. And finally, we'd like to be able to add together a rational number and a complex number. So this says 1 half plus 0.5 plus 2i should give me 1 half plus 0.5 is 1 plus 2i. And let's say I have 2i. This is how you write 2i. And you want to multiply that by 3 halves. Well, what you should get is that the 2's cancel, and you end up with 3i. And here's that representation of 3 times the square root of negative 1 in polar coordinates. These are cross-type arithmetic examples. And our system just doesn't support these at all right now. That's what we're going to try to get to today.